Have you ever told yourself that all you're going to do is just get your thoughts together and then when you speak, it'll just flow and then it doesn't? This video will help you whether you are doing a PowerPoint presentation or you are doing a YouTube channel. You've got to get your thoughts down on paper so that people know what you're saying and you don't forget to leave anything out. Let's get started. Hello again and welcome back to the How Channel. My name is Miss Margaret and we are going to be talking about production templates today and how you go from this to this. How did we get there? Well, it all started out with one sheet of paper and a dream. What I have here this is, I don't know if you can see that. This is like, I can't even bother about trying to find this file, but basically it's a list of talking points I made for myself on this nice little sheet of paper. And I thought I could just speak because I'm charming. Well, that did not last. And it soon petered out. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> I say it and that, and you don't know what I'm talking about. So that tells me that I need something more. I need discipline and what I need is a production template. If you are a, a content producer on YouTube, you definitely need this. If you are giving presentations on PowerPoint, you definitely need this. The rules haven't changed. It's just a question of whether or not we apply them. So what are we gonna talk about? We're going to talk about time. We're going to talk about audience attention span. We're going to talk about what it takes to say what you have to say and condense down and condense down and condense down until you've said everything in nine seconds or less. I have a lot of practicing to do. I've been working on my elevator speech or my intro as they call it in the YouTube world for about two days and it's now 15 seconds. So I have a lot of work to do. What you saw just now was just the quick, you know, let's try something new approach. And that was fine, but it still did not tell you what the channel is about. It does not tell you what to expect. It leaves room for a person to wonder about my credibility. So there are a few things that have to happen with this script. So let's talk about it. A great place to start is actually the YouTube channel itself. So here we are at the How channel on YouTube. And the first thing I want to do is click over here where it says customize channel. I've been redirected to the channel customization page. Here I'm going to click on channel analytics. Now that I'm in the analytics section, I can come here to where it says research. And there I can type in a search term, which you see I already have, how to write a script. And then I wrote YouTube video. Do you have to type in for a YouTube video? No, you do not. But I'm going to specify to not pluralize things too much because some people simply don't. They get this far, especially if they're using a remote on their TV and they don't want to type the S. They got to go and go down, scroll down, go left, go left. Now tap it. They'll stop and then they'll hit the enter key. So you do the same thing that your viewer is likely to do. And here we have our results. As you can see, there are two and they are both by YouTube's estimation, medium in terms of search volume. Well, I wonder where they got that from. Well, let's go find out and guess who's telling it? Google Trends. Well, 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 this is when we have to stop and take a commercial break because Google owns YouTube. So if you have been telling yourself that you're going to ignore Google and just do your YouTube bit all by your lonesome and you riding dirty and you're solo, you, you know, you're a rogue. No, you're not. If you think that you were going to create a YouTube channel and neither Facebook nor Google nor any major tech company would, would allow you to do so without getting hands on you, welcome to the reality of commerce in the digital era. 
So on with the show. On a second search, I've slightly, slightly altered the search phrase. And it now says how to write script YouTube. Why did I take out video? Because video is kind of redundant, isn't it? YouTube is a video search platform. So here we are with results that are all over the place, frankly, but look at the results now. We're getting closer to finding out really what people are searching for. India and the United States ranked first and second on searching for how-to videos. And we also now know that we can break out related topics, as we can see here. Screenwriting as a topic, facts as a topic, how to write script for YouTube video. Now that we have our keywords and you've done the painstaking research to find out what terms are probably best for us at this time, low to medium in interest, it will increase our chances of being found. Now, keep in mind when people are looking on Google or searching on Google, they're getting results from YouTube as well. If you haven't noticed, go back to Google and look again at those results. You'll see that video is offering you something as well. Now, that is going to pose a slight challenge for YouTube content creators. People are not happy about it, but it is the reality of our time. This is a business for all of us. We will have to work within those parameters. So now on with the actual planning document, the part you've been waiting for. Here is my pre-planning and planning document for scripts, and it includes my script templates. It all starts with the keyword. Now that we have our keywords, we can put them into our document, our template document, to make sure that we are remaining focused. We have that in our vision and not just something that we put into a description in our YouTube channel, back office, and you know, somebody get the dust off of it. This is something that will keep your channel purpose, your objectives, and making sure that you are on message all the time. This is where it happens is with the keywords. So not only are we going to focus on keywords, we're also going to brainstorm titles, considering what the focus keywords are and what emotional trigger we can bring to it. And that should not be more than 100 characters. We have to concern ourselves with thumbnail design, specifically three to five words maximum containing a click-worthy element and to show your emotive face. Now, I'm gonna stop there because you all know I struggled with this face thing and the name thing when I first started. I'm over it. I show the logo, I do it all. Now, this last item actually, let me back up here. Readable on mobile devices. Never forget that the majority of your viewers on YouTube are viewing on mobile devices. Never, never, never let that escape your attention. I watch it on my TV because I just enjoy some of the movies and things, but for our purposes, I think it's wise to make sure that our thumbnails and our content is as provocative as possible, at least when we're starting out. We're not CNN. We can't just assume that a picture and a CNN logo will sell, you know, sell it under scripting. We need to have a hook, about 10 to 20 seconds, a title sequence, three to five seconds, a branded intro. This is a visual element. And then in the body, you want to give people a reason to watch your video straight until the end. Don't ever forget that you're trying to get as much watch time as possible. If you are able to, to engage the viewer straight to the end of the video, you will find that you go up in the analytics rankings, you go up with the AI piece, everything is propagating now because people are watching and engaging. I wonder if it's more important for people to watch to the end or to tap the like and tap out. I personally would rather people watch to the end, but people have lives. 
someone sitting in the dentist office and then they watched it for two minutes and never came back. We cannot take this personally. So just keep pushing your content and stay focused and this is how we're going to do it. So the, the ratings are all over the place and to find a rank, I don't think that's possible. I think it's, it's all subjective. So no matter what, Keep in mind, you need to keep your audience engaged. Ways to engage your viewers is to ask a question, engage them somehow in a comment when you first start the video. I tried to practice some of these already in this video. I can't say I have it down pat, but I'm, I'm at least better than I was. Um, an end card information. If you have a Patreon account where you have subscribers, you want to make sure that you complete that checklist before you publish and here it is. So any kind of links that you've mentioned, um, if I say in a video, oh, I saw this on a in, a in a sermon, I did that recently in fact, I'll put the link in the comments or in the description rather. And I did, and it was queued up for the person's convenience. So you always want to keep it as convenient as possible for your audience. We also have pinned comments, things like that. Any, any tags, published date. Now, in this written document, writing in a published date is really more for you. You can get all of that from your analytics board. But now we come into the gravy. This is the good stuff. And what do you see front and center? This is a nine minute script. It is for full length videos. And what I did was try to time here, if you look in the center column, how long these things should take. Content, intro, solutions, takeaways, things that I don't wanna to forget to do when I do videos. I also have a six minute script. And this one is for that six to 10 sweet spot that I've noticed. Um, my viewers seem to bail out right, right around six minutes, 10 at the most. Some of them watch full length, but those are not the people I'm the most concerned about. I don't want someone to be turned off because they notice the timestamp on it is 20 minutes. I'd rather do a six minute video and do, do it in increments of six, I would say, and then have three videos instead of one for 20 minutes. Some people will binge watch if you keep it short and to the point. So other than the six minute script, I also have a three minute script. The three minute script is still paring it down. If you notice the body, the content is starting to diminish. So with the nine minute video, I think I had it at about five minutes. And in the six minute video, it was about three and a half, maybe something like that. And then for the three minute script, it's two and 45 seconds, two minutes, 45 seconds. Finally, last but not least, is the morning after script. This is completely off the chart. It's not a nine minute video, it's a whenever I finish talking video. In which case, most of the viewers that are there are there with a cup of coffee or they've scheduled some time or they just don't mind listening for a while. So I'm a little more conversational and I'm gonna take my time and talk more about Miss Margaret and so on and so forth. And here you'll notice what, seven minutes of tried and true time. Um, and that has nothing to do with the actual takeaway and conclusions. That probably is not gonna be 10 seconds. This is, a, this is a work in progress and this is my sandbox. This is how I'm organizing my scripts for YouTube. I hope that this has been helpful to you. And if so, please like this video. Absolutely subscribe if you have not. I'm sure to cover something that you want to know about. And that's really it for today. I thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.